Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're gonna be talking about a whole bunch of exciting Unity news. So we're gonna be talking about the Unity 2020.1 release. It just received a full release. And so I'm gonna be going over some of the new features that are included in that. I'm also gonna be talking about the Entities 0.13 release. There's some exciting new features coming to the Entities ECS packages as well. Also gonna be talking about the Bolt Visual Scripting Editor. There's some exciting news related to that. And also gonna be talking about power tools for game development. So if these things interest you, you're definitely in the right place. And if you do find today's video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos related to this content. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. So let's get right into it. So as of July 23rd, Unity 2020 officially has a full release. It's been in uh, the alpha and beta phases for quite a while now and we do have a finally a full release so this is the first official release of unity 2020 and uh, pretty recently we also saw the unity 2019 version move into the long-term release status so basically that means they're not going to be adding any new features to it they're just going to be updating it with bug fixes over the next couple years and so Unity does recommend to use a long-term support build if you are going to be working on a serious commercial product. So they're still not recommending you use the Unity 2020.1 full release at this time, but because it does have that full release certification, it is much more stable than it was in the alpha and beta stages. So with Unity 2020, they're migrating a lot of the major features into different packages, and that kind of extracts the things out of the main core engine to kind of help with efficiency and things like that. So you don't need to have a bunch of packages that you don't need for your game. So basically from here on out, when we're gonna see these new releases of Unity, supposedly there's gonna be two per year. Um, so the Unity 2020.2 version, if I can say that correctly, is supposed to come out in quarter four of this year. So now with these big major updates, these are mostly gonna be kind of like high level changes. So there's gonna be a lot of changes to the interface and some of the major kind of, you know, applications and plugins that are, you know, built into the core of the editor. So for one, because of the higher focus on the package manager, we do have a brand new package manager. If you're at all confused on how to use that, definitely check out the video that I made that goes over how to use that and how you can enable preview packages so you can um, take advantage of all sorts of exciting things like dots and ECS. Another big thing that they're adding to Unity 2020 is edit prefabs in context. So basically when you select a prefab for editing, you can edit it within the context of the world. So basically it kind of grays everything out, but you can still see where it is relative to the world. So that's kind of a neat feature. And another interesting thing that they're adding is the focused inspector. So the focused inspector basically allows you to use multiple inspector windows at the same time or you can even have inspector windows that consist of just a single component just to really narrow it down to you know what you're working on at that time. Another cool UI change is they've added in better progress bars. So down at the bottom of Unity, you will have kind of like a global progress bar for basically everything that's happening. And you can actually click on that to expand it and you can see all the different progress bars of all the asynchronous tasks that are being ran at the same time. And it's pretty cool because you can look at, you know, subtasks for different tasks and you can add filters to monitor or just specific tasks. And one of the major things they wanted to do with this is to unify all the project bars into one central location. Um, just because there are some times where progress bars were appearing in different areas and it might lead to a little bit of confusion when you could really just kind of have all those progress bars sit in one central location. So I really do like that. There's also been a major overhaul of the profiler. So the profile can actually run as a standalone app now. And so there's all sorts of benefits that come from using it as a standalone app and all sorts of neat things that you can do. And I think this really warrants a dedicated video going over all the new features of the profiler. But just know that there is increased stability and we can also access some of the data through the recorder and sampler APIs. Also, there's gonna be better visualization of different happenings with multi-threaded code. So that's really exciting for things like the C-sharp job system as well as the entity component system. Unity's also added in a dedicated debug mode for the editor. So when you don't need to be debugging things, you can actually turn debug mode off and just go into the, the standard normal mode you're actually going to get better performance because it's not doing any of that debug logging or anything. But if you do need to use any of those features, putting it in debug mode is just a couple clicks away. We've also seen some improvements in the 2D space, so 2D animation being improved with the Burst compiler. 
as well as the 2D physics has some updates to it for better performance. And lastly, the new input system is a verified package. So you can implement that into your game and kind of have that one central location that all your inputs go through. This is definitely something that I want to explore in a future video. And so those are far from all the features that are coming to the Unity 2020.1 engine, but these are some of the ones that I'm most excited about. I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to check out the full change log of features added. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is the entity component system got a new release. So as of now, it's on version 0.13. So one of the biggest changes is the minimum editor version is now 2020.1.0b15. So this is actually the beta version of Unity 2020.1. And this is kind of interesting because I was running into some issues as I was testing around with this. So because the 2020.1 full release is out, and that theoretically should be a newer version than this beta version that's proposed as the minimum editor version. I went ahead and installed the full release of 2020.1 and tried to add the entities packages into it. However, they were nowhere to be seen in the package manager, even with preview packages enabled. So I thought that's kind of interesting. So I went to the Unity website and downloaded the latest beta version for 2020.1. Um, which is basically the, the beta has been completed now. So that's actually an older version. So I had to go to the website to download that. And so that was actually beta version 16. So when I downloaded that, I couldn't see the entities packages in there either. So I'm like, okay, this is really weird. So then I went and downloaded the uh, 15 version, which is the one that they say is the minimum supported version for the entities 13 package. And interestingly enough, I was able to see the ECS packages in there. So I'm not sure if this is sort of like a bug or something like that, but I have let some people at Unity know about it um, in case this is some sort of bug. Hey everyone, just wanted to give you a quick update on the preview package situation. So I did hear back from someone over at Unity and basically they informed me that this is not a bug or some type of error or anything like that. Um, they are intentionally hiding these preview packages that they consider to fall on the more experimental side and dots and ECS definitely fall on the experimental side. So I understand that they made that decision and personally I would wish that they were included directly into the package manager, um, but it looks like we will have to do a little bit of modification to manually add in those packages. So I will be coming out with a video very soon showing you how to do this, but if you do want to get up and running with some of these preview packages, I will leave a link to some blog posts down in the description below that shows you how to get up and running by manually adding these packages. Anyways, with that out of the way, we can talk about some of the cool new features that they're adding to the uh, entity component system as of version 13. So one of the things that I'm most excited about is we now have the ability to add and remove multiple components at one time um, to a single entity or multiple entities using just one call uh, to the entity command buffer. And so this is only part of the entity command buffer as of right now, but they do say it's coming soon to the entity manager. So if we're attaching a bunch of components to a single entity through code, now instead of doing that over a bunch of line calls, we can just do that in one single call. So that's gonna be nice. There's also some new player management functions that we can use to add and remove systems to specific parts in the player loop. Um, so we can have that you know order exactly how we want it to. So those are some of the highlights for Entities version 0.13. Again, do check out the full change log release notes if you do want to um, see everything that has been included. So next I'm going to be talking about Bolt, which is the visual scripting tool that Unity recently acquired within the past couple months. And the big news of the day is that Bolt is now free to use. So previously I think it was like $80. And so now it's completely free to use for all versions of Unity. So that's really exciting. Now, if you did purchase Bolt in the time since it was required by Unity, which is basically any time after May 4th, they will be issuing a refund. So expect an email within the next couple weeks from someone uh, with the Unity Asset Store. And from what I understand, Bolt version one, which is the you know currently released version of Bolt, that's still gonna be available through the Asset Store, whereas Bolt version two is going to be available just directly through the package manager. And so last up, I just wanna talk about some power tools for game development. So if you're building something, let's say like a house, of course you're gonna need tools to you know build everything and assemble all the different pieces. And sure you could just use some you know regular old hand tools, but that's you know gonna be really difficult and take you quite a long time. So we have power tools and that makes the job a whole lot easier, makes it just much more efficient and more effective to actually build this house. Well, it turns out making games is similar in some ways because we're creating a bunch of separate little parts and then kind of bringing them all together to make this final project. 
And so a lot of times we're gonna be needing to use tools to help us build these different parts and assemble them all together. And of course you can go make your own tools. I have a bunch of videos on this channel about how to actually get started making tools in the Unity editor. But sometimes it's just a lot easier to spend a couple bucks and get some awesome tools that people already created on places like the Unity Asset Store. And so I wanted to bring this up because as of right now, Unity is having a mega bundle sale where there's like different tier levels that you can purchase just different so-called power tools. So I purchased the bundle at the $10 level because I thought it was just such a great deal. So you get Rainbow Folders 2 as well as Editor Console Pro, which are two asset tools that I was probably gonna buy anyways. And then you also get a tail animation package, which I, I think is just a cool bonus. And they also do have different higher levels if you wanna get some more features. So you have a $30 level that includes these things right here, and then a $60 level, which adds all these things onto that full package. So you get basically a $650 value for the price of $60, which, I mean, you can't beat that. So if you are interested, I'd highly recommend that you at least go check that out and kind of see what some of these tools are about. By the way, if you do use any of those links in the description below and you do make a purchase um, because I am a Unity affiliate, I may get a small portion of that sale. So this is not only a great way for you to get some awesome tools, but it helps support me in the channel. So anyways, that's going to wrap up today's video where I just went over a whole bunch of news in the Unity ecosystem. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots of more videos like this related to uh, Unity and game development. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.